welcome back to the torque test channel today we have another for science video where we attempt to answer a common question we get in the comments what happens when my battery is not fully charged how much power am i losing and that's a good question on this channel you've probably seen us test cordless tools and those are always showing full when we do because well we don't want to get lit up in the comments section but truthfully how much of these tools lives are spent operating at that full capacity on an air tool, maybe the compressor will kick on, but for the most part, it's grab and go. With cordless, it could be a downward slope into uselessness, like the lights we test. We'll have to see. So we're going to test that today with DeWalt and Milwaukee impacts and batteries and learn some stuff that surprised us, quite frankly. But why then are you looking at a heat gun right now? Well, we need a quick and easy way to drain a battery, and from a physics standpoint, it doesn't get quicker or easier to drain watts than turning that into heat. So we're going to use the 20 volt DeWalt DCE 530B, which goes for around $105 to $110, and the Milwaukee M18 2688-20, which goes for $130 to $150, to drain batteries in between runs. Stay tuned to the end of this episode where we pit the DeWalt heat gun versus the Milwaukee to see which one is a better buy there, and it's not very close. After draining them, then we'll allow them a couple minutes to cool and test and retest to see how much power you're leaving on the table when you don't have a battery pack at its peak capacity. What choosing DeWalt in Milwaukee allows us to do is see many different battery levels. DeWalt having three levels and Milwaukee having four means we can very roughly see power at 100%, 75% from Milwaukee, then 66% from DeWalt, and so forth, 50, 33, 25 and low or flashing from both. We of course have done battery head to heads before and shown when it is evident which high dollar high capacity batteries are better on this channel when it comes to putting out those beans. But one thing we have glossed over is while a high output battery from Milwaukee, for instance, may not on this impact wrench make a night and day difference, it is possible that after half a day of use, that battery is being less drained and therefore putting out much more beans because it's, let's say, three quarter full rather than one quarter full. So let's see if that stuff does matter a whole lot. The only test we'll be doing today is max torque, 10 seconds in reverse. Here's the DeWalt DCF899 high torque with their five amp hour pack doing its baseline run. Five hundred and forty eight business as usual for the DeWalt a clean curve there despite sounding like a box of rocks Which sometimes this tool does now we let the heat gun do its work and bring that Three bars down to two and give it a couple minutes to cool The Milwaukee needs a rubber band to sort of keep its trigger on in this case Here's that two out of three battery Five fifteen already 6% down from its first full run. Here's just entering into one bar in the battery. Follow the blue line on the graph. Five twenty three. It's worth noting that when we test these, we don't have the benefit of a dyno curve like you're seeing here. We just see the final number, so this is sort of throwing us for a loop when we saw this, but as you can clearly see on the curve, the one bar battery run is seeing much less dynamic torque down low. So while this gun with one bar might eventually tighten something if you give it long enough, it's not busting too much rust this stuff free out the gate compared to two and full. Now for low battery, which is basically with the battery still working okay, but probably going to be dead soon. Yeah, 402. That's the difference we've been waiting for. Everywhere on the curve looking quite unhealthy and 27% down overall. This is sort of the uh, you're in a junkyard situation and you don't have a spare battery and on the last head bolt of a cylinder head trying to take it off scenario. You just got to do what you got to do, but you're going to be some power down in the process. Now let's hop into Milwaukee with its finer resolution four bar battery level and see if some of these percentages still hold true. 
We chose a mid-torque for reasons we can explain later in our wrap-up. Eight months ago, it was making 385 on this dyno. Let's see how healthy she is today. Three eighty one, basically the same, not bad. Now for three out of four battery bars, admittedly something we had not tested until today for some reason. We're usually pretty worried about being crucified about our testing methods as it is. Three seventy four, and again we saw this figuring it was a mirror like run and no real difference. But even here at a 75% charged battery, some real change along the curve, that's interesting to see. Now here's a half charged M18 in black. Three seventy-eight, a couple points up like the DeWalt saw in its peak, very little change along the curve but it is there. Here's an at least 25% charged battery. Three forty-six, with it starting to separate out at the end. Not so much a happy tool anymore. Last up is low battery, which if the tool's been run recently. At low, the battery bar will sort of flash here. 279, 25.5% down, and you could hear it out the gate, real sluggish to get going and just not happy with life in general, as you can see from its power curve. On the day, it felt like to us that the battery level didn't matter a whole lot, except for when you're nearly dead, but when able to see the plot of data here, there is something extra going on and you can see it on the graph. But you can also see it as well in our data roundup here before we get into the heat gun head to head. We've got brand here, model number they were tested with, battery level, which is three levels and low for DeWalt and four levels and low for M18. Here is their deficits, if looking strictly at their max torque numbers, which we're often guilty of doing on this channel. But for you out there in the wild needing to bust something rusted free or just get the job done quickly, have a look at this column, which is average power across the run. It takes into account low out the gate performance as well as peak performance. With both tools runs, you can sort of see the story we're hoping to tell here. The DeWalt high torques power being reduced by battery level all the way down to the point of a fully charged mid torque where the M18 picks up here and withers away down to 192 foot-pounds across the run, showing that a low battery high torque can still be around the performance of a mid torque power-wise for better or worse. Also, you'll see these percentages in losses got greater in this average column, sort of in order of battery percentage, 6, 5, 9, 10, 14, 27, then 36. Close enough to being in order that we think it does tell some type of story here. And really some huge losses over here, but when you look closely, it does appear to us that as long as you avoid low and 25, maybe 33% battery level, above that you're seeing single digit percentage losses, which, hey, ain't that bad. We sort of expected to see more losses at half full, for instance. With that buttoned up, let's take a look at those heat guns. So we got same size battery, same voltage, which is 18 volt or 20 volt max for both of these tools for those of you who don't understand DeWalt's marketing strategies. We pointed these two guns at an angle of a quarter inch steel plate and measured the temperature of the plate every minute until they died off. Here's that. So yeah, as we said, it was not close. The DeWalt just does pretty much everything better. It has two speeds, high and low, M18 has one. It has a trigger lock so you don't need a third hand when doing heat shrink with this tool standing up. M18 has a finicky trigger safety switch, which is annoying to us. It costs much less, and as you see here, it puts out noticeably more heat. But does it last as long as that heat just killing off the battery quicker? Let's see. Turns out only by about one minute. Neither of these tools lasting very long in a full 5 amp hour battery, 17 to 18 minutes. So yeah, use a corded when you can, but DeWalt if you can't, we reckon. 
Thanks for joining us for another Force Science video. We'll be continuing to test your suggestions from the comments section. Hit like and subscribe to continue on that journey together. And thank you for watching.